Yes. Okay. Uh, if you're from the land of the sun, though, what color is your skin going to be? Probably not too white. It might be a little bit red, sunburned. I mean, I, I get sunburned, right? Pink-ish. So, okay, now, now, this is now like, okay, wait a minute. It all looks so good in 1491, right? And it made sense, but not... Okay. Did he have a beard? Not on that picture I showed you. <laughs> and not, and not on, on, on the accounts that if they were following the <coughs> treaties that the Spanish and the Muslims made, that they said, you know, when the, when the Spanish kicked, when the Spanish uh, Catholic kings kicked the Muslims out of Spain, they said you have three choices. You convert, you leave, or you die. If you stay, you must shave your beards and never grow it out. And that went for everybody, even the Spanish people. Because, you know, you could be a Spanish person and, and you have a beard, and a beard is kind of like, you know, your, your calling card, like you're a Muslim. It doesn't mean anything if you don't have it, but for them, back then, it was like, you got to shave your beard. you got to drink alcohol, eat pork, and on Fridays, which is the Muslim holy day for prayer, you got to leave your shop open and your windows open so that we know that you're not practicing in secret. Right? So if they were following those accords, then no, they should not, none of them should have had a beard. Did they have white robes? Uh, that's an easy one. Why couldn't they? I mean, I'm sure they could have. Caballeros, they wear their, their, their chaps, you know, their, their armor. They're on a horse. I mean, you could, but you're not going to be wearing armor over a dress. It would be kind of not practical. So, what happened? Was Columbus get like one? Was he the beautiful brother that came from the land of the sun with beard and white robe? Who does that sound like? Jesus. Did you all know that Muslims believe in Jesus? Uh, some of you, some of you, I hope do. Uh, and those that, that don't, yes, we do. Jesus, peace be upon him, is one of the more important prophets in our belief system. He's a prophet. He's, he's not any of the, the things that, that Christians attribute to, but a prophet. And we believe that he was not crucified, but that he was raised to the heavens. And that one day, he was going to return. One day he was going to return. Similar to Christian belief. So, after five centuries that began with darkness, uh, interestingly, in, in uh, Judaism and in Islam, the day begins with night, with darkness. The Sabbath, for our Jewish brothers and sisters, begins on Friday, when the sun goes down, right? This epoch, the epoch of the white corn, is ending. 2012, that's why the people believed that the world was going to end, right? That was the end of an epoch. El quinto sol, the five centuries. Now, the Aztecs were not Greeks, they were not Roman, they were not anything like the old continents. They, they were from here, right? A century for the Aztecs was 104 years. And, and again, I can give that conversation when I talk about the calendar, but just take my word for it, it was 104 years. So if we do the math, 104 years times five. Quick, pull out your phones. Or do, huh? 520, okay. Math, math major? No. No, oh, wow, impressive. 520 years, so let's see if you can do this one. 520 years. When was the first contact? So add 520 to 1492. Yes. 2012. The end of the world. 
not the end of the world, but the end of the epoch, la epoca. When I started doing this research, you know, I was like, the Aztecs said that their world was going to end with the fifth sun. And I was like, okay, so this was the Aztecs. Their world is going to come to an end here. And I was like, okay, uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, they were wrong, Aztecas, right? They were wrong because the end of the fifth sun is going to be after this. And in my arrogance, of course, I was wrong. They were not. So I had to rethink, like, okay, wait a minute. My bias, my privilege, right? I was like, okay, if the Aztec said that the end was coming with the fifth sun, let's count this as five. And like a good teacher, I backwards map five, four, three, two. And then again, I started looking at other traditions. In Islam, when somebody passes on to the next life, the dua that we make is, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun. We come from Allah, and our return is to Allah. We come from God, and we return to God. And I was like, okay, so the end has to be in the beginning. This is a circle. This is forever repeating. Like the end is right here, the beginning is all right there. And then it ends and it begins. Like everything in life, we have summer, what well, comes after some fall, winter. <laughs> well, it's been winter here for a very long time, so. <laughs> you get the picture, it's like, el tiempo es circular, like life, everything, there's, there's patterns to everything. And, and that story is in the Quran too. Everything has a cycle, everything comes in its orbit. Some are little orbits, some are big orbits, and some like orbits that are like, we are never gonna see it come back around to hit us, right? So I was like, okay. And then I was like, okay. Five, four, three, two, and I, I took a leap. And I said, one. And then I pondered on that. And I pondered on that. And do you see this symbol right here? It's right here. This is one of the symbols in the Aztec calendar. It's Tecpatl, or the flint stone. I like the caricatura of like <coughs> pebbles and bambam bam stone, mm -hmm. but like the obsidian stone. This was like the sharpest object that they had. This is what they <coughs> did their weapons with. And tekpatl is the flint stone, flint stone, I'm sorry, and it, it, it means our word. It also symbolizes the truth that cuts. And on that is the symbol, the, the Aztec numerical symbol, my numerical symbol for one. So I was like, okay, whoa, well, okay, that's one. One, two, three, four, five. Makes sense. Cinco centenarios, five centuries, 520 plus 1492 brings me to 2012. Snap. Like, what does that mean? In Arabic, what, uh, we have a, a mashallah, brother uh, Tuki. What, what is the Arabic word for word? Kalina. Kalina, okay. Can you tell me what that word means? Kalina. What, is there another meaning in Islamic uh, terminology? Like, what, what, what is the kalima? What is the kalima? La ilaha illallah Muhammad. Oh, the kalima, yeah. That one, I mean that one. Yeah. And, and what does God represent? I had one. Simple. Well, simple. Right? It's a very, very difficult thing to, to kind of uh, read through, but the beautiful knowledge, peace and harmony, like that's Islam. For, for somebody who did not grow up a Muslim but later found it uh, and living through, through propaganda 
uh, I was in the military during the, the first uh, Iraq war, and the propaganda that was coming out against Muslims was very similar to the propaganda that like the year before was against Mexicanos, right? Like, well, it kind of still is. It's like one and the same. Evil, rapist, you know, machos, all those things. So I started reading, I started reading, and from the Quran, in uh, chapter 16, verse 36, uh, the chapter name is called the Bee. Thank you. And it says, and indeed, within every community we have raised up an apostle and trusted with this message. Worship God and shun the powers of evil. Chapter 40, verse 78, chapter of the believer. Mu'min. <laughs> Thank you. You just follow him wherever you go. <laughs> Back me up, bro. Uh, it says, We did aforetime send apostles before thee. Of them there are, there are some whose story we have related to thee, and some whose story we have not related to thee. So there are prophets who we do not know their names, but we know that if they said, Worship God and don't do evil, well, hey, you know, okay, we, we can talk. 